first easy recipe is for peanut butter protein balls, and these are made with ingredients that all last in your pantry, so you should be able to buy these items one time and make this recipe over and over. For this recipe, I use creamy peanut butter. You can use whatever peanut butter you have. I also use honey, flax seed, mini dark chocolate chips, but you can use any chocolate chips that you have. I just find the mini to be easiest to eat. And I also use oats. Again, you can use whatever oats you have. These are just the ones I had. If you need anything, these items should hopefully still all be available since they're not hot items right now, like toilet paper or frozen pizzas. Ain't nobody rushing to buy flax seed. I start by adding all of the dry ingredients into a mixing bowl, and I will write the recipe I'm using down below in the description so you can follow along in case you decide to replicate but I put a fourth of a cup of flaxseed, a fourth of a cup of mini dark chocolate chips. Um, I added some shredded coconut to this batch, but that's just a personal preference, you don't have to. And then a cup of oats. I mix them all together before adding in the wet ingredients. And once those are all mixed together, I add two thirds of a cup of creamy peanut butter and two tablespoons of honey. This is the part of the recipe that is the most important to follow because with the dry ingredients you can add other things into your personal preference like I added some shredded coconut in for my personal taste but in the past I tried to switch up the liquid ingredients like I mixed it with cream honey instead of a true liquid honey and it messed up the consistency so definitely stick to the liquid honey and the two-thirds cup of peanut butter. I like to blend all of the ingredients into the peanut butter by pulling the peanut butter up along the side of the bowl and then folding it into the batter. I find this is the easiest way to do it and it also keeps your hands the cleanest. After all the ingredients are mixed together, you're ready to roll. I personally roll these into small bite-sized balls, but you can make them to whatever size you like. In the past I've made them bigger, I just personally find the consistency to be best when they're in the small bite-sized balls. I also find that I reach for them more when they're the smaller size because they go great with coffee in the morning, or if you just want a quick snack in the middle of the day, I like the smaller ball versus having like a large mound of peanut butter in the middle of the day. I've melted some of the dark chocolate chips and I'm coating a few of the balls in the melted chocolate. I like to eat these almost as a healthy dessert after meals. I'm also rolling some of the other balls in shredded coconut to add some more texture to them. You don't have to do this step if you just want the regular balls, but this is a fun way to add some variation. Then you just place them in the fridge. I put them in the fridge overnight and then eat them the next morning. I love having a few of these for breakfast with my coffee or as a healthy snack in the middle of the day. One of my favorite easy lunches or dinners has been this cauliflower gnocchi and peppers dish. I'm using frozen cauliflower gnocchi from Trader Joe's that I already had in my freezer, but you could use any gnocchi that you could find. I know pasta has been kind of selling out in stores, but gnocchi hasn't, so if you have Instacart or any other grocery delivery service, gnocchi should still be available. I also have frozen peppers from Trader Joe's, but if you can find fresh peppers as well, those would work even better. I also add breakfast sausage to this meal, so just pick any one that you like. I add the frozen gnocchi to a hot pan with a little bit of water and cover it and let it cook, same with the peppers. Then once everything is cooked, I add the gnocchi, peppers, and sausage to a bowl. If you had fresh peppers, you could add the peppers and sausage to the oven and bake them instead. I love that I can make this filling meal from items that last in the freezer, which means no trips to the store. This next meal idea is a filling and healthy falafel wrap made with frozen falafels from Trader Joe's. Frozen options are really great right now because you can buy them once and they last in your freezer, really cutting down your trips to the grocery store or ordering delivery. You'll also need a tortilla shell, hummus, and some cucumber. Thankfully, there is still fresh produce in stock, so if you do order delivery or you do make a grocery run, it should still be available. These falafel are pre-made and only need about a minute in the microwave, so while those heat up, I slice up some cucumber and then I will spread hummus onto a tortilla shell. I like to warm my hummus up before I put it onto the tortilla shell as well. Then when the falafel are out of the microwave, I break them up and put them on the hummus with the cucumber. And then if you have tzatziki sauce or ranch sauce, you can add that as well if you would like. You can add whatever else you would like to this wrap. I just personally only had cucumbers, but if you had tomatoes or anything like that, that would also be great. This meal is so filling and also healthy. It can feel like eating healthy is really hard right now with all of the frozen options, so this is a great recipe to try. 
This next recipe is blender banana pancakes. and It is my favorite breakfast or breakfast for dinner recipe. You've probably seen a version of banana pancakes out on the internet and I've tried all of them so I thought I would share with you guys what I personally find to be the most delicious recipe. You need an egg, a banana, some almond flour, oats, and some flax seed. The base of this recipe is the banana and the egg, so if that's all you have, you can still make blender banana pancakes. I just personally like to mix in the other ingredients to give them a fluffier, thicker consistency like a true pancake. I love to make this recipe when I either have a banana that's about to go bad or I only have an egg or two left. This is the perfect go-to meal. I personally put almond flour and oats in mine to give it that true fluffy pancake-like texture. And I kind of just eyeball it. I start blending and mixing and put it to the texture that I like. If you only had almond flour or you only had oats, you could use either or. You do not have to have both to still make this recipe. I also like mixing my batter in the blender because I find that it's just the easiest cleanup. I just pour the batter directly out of the blender onto my griddle pan. If you did the banana pancake like it's on the internet with just a banana and egg, you get a lot more pancakes, but they're a lot thinner. The reason I add all those other ingredients is because it makes it a lot thicker, as you can tell. So my recipe makes about three medium-sized pancakes or four small-sized pancakes. So if you want more, you could do more bananas and more egg. I like to do the one banana to one egg ratio. I like to finish off these blender banana pancakes with some peanut butter. Not only for the taste, but for the extra protein. I find that this makes these pancakes much more filling, especially if you're making a breakfast for dinner version. If you had some fresh fruit, that would also be amazing to add to these pancakes. Another one of my go-to dinners to make is homemade chicken noodle soup. And I love making this meal because it is seriously so low maintenance. All you have to do is put all the ingredients into a slow cooker and after about 10 minutes of prep, you can walk away and it makes itself. I'm using a low sodium chicken broth and putting it into my instant pot. You can use whatever slow cooker you have. And then I just chop up all of my vegetables and I'm going to be adding these all at the same time. So I'm chopping up carrots, celery, and onions. And I add these all at the same time as I add my potatoes. And I'm just using whatever potatoes I had on hand. So tonight I had yellow potatoes. So I'm cutting those up and then I'm going to add the potatoes and the vegetables to the slow cooker at the same time. Then I had a chicken breast in the freezer. So I just took that out and put it right into my Instant Pot. I also love to add rosemary to my soup. I had some fresh rosemary, so I chopped that up, but you could also use dried rosemary. I just really feel like it adds another layer of flavor and depth to the soup. I like to use the slow cook setting on my Instant Pot for this recipe. So I will set it to slow cook for about three hours. So I will let it cook for itself for about two hours and 45 minutes. And then when there's about 15 minutes left before we're ready to eat dinner, that's when I will add the noodles to the Instant Pot. So then those will cook for about 10 to 15 minutes and then you have the best chicken noodle soup. This last recipe is one of my favorite healthy breakfast recipes and the best part is that it can be made from ingredients mostly found in your pantry. For this recipe you will need a nut milk of your choice, I personally prefer almond milk, and chia seeds. That is the base of this recipe. So you need to make the chia seed pudding the night before you actually want to have it for breakfast. And the way you do that is by adding three tablespoons of chia seeds to a bowl with a cup of nut milk. You're going to mix up the chia seeds into the milk and then after you mix everything together you're going to let the chia seeds sit for about five minutes so it can absorb some of the milk. You're going to mix it together again to get the clumps out and then cover it and place it into the fridge overnight. The next morning when you go to take it out for breakfast this is what it will look like. It will actually look like chia seed pudding. You can make your chia bowl however you like. I personally like to add shaved almonds to add some texture to mine. I add whatever fresh fruit I have in the house. I like to add some shredded coconut and I also like to put on some mini dark chocolate chips.